And welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, all the way in Mali, where the interim leader, uh, Asimi Goita, survived an assassination attempt at a mosque after two assailants attempted to, uh, well, attacked him with a knife. He, of course, uh, spoke a few minutes later after the attack, uh, claiming that he was very well um, and, uh, of course, uh, showed that he survived the attack. This brings more questions with regards to the turmoil in Mali's political space. And this morning, we're going to be speaking with uh, Imo Edet, a journalist in, uh, who's joining us from Senegal, Dakar, Senegal, this morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Edet. Good morning. Uh, okay, can you, can you hear us uh, clearly, Mr. Edet? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Now I can we, hear you clearly. Yes, now we can. All right, so welcome once again. Um, Mali has, has been through a lot in the last uh, few months, uh, aside the death of uh, yeah, the coup, rather, and um, overthrowing of uh, the former president. Asimi Goita has also been um, through you know, his own little bit of controversy here and there. Um, what do you think is currently happening? Uh, it is meant to be a transitional government. He currently is in charge. But what would you describe as the current political uh, space in Mali? Well, the tensions are quite high in Mali right now. Everybody is expecting, um, you know, time to really run as fast as it can uh, so that they can have a new government. And um, when we had the situation in Mali yesterday, two things came to our mind here, especially on our editorial, uh, at the editorial meeting. One, either Goita is playing to the gallery to show that, um, you know, to gain uh, favor or to be endeared to the people more. Or secondly, it was just a real attack showing the anger of the people. And um, from the report, we understand that even the attackers also had guns, not just, uh, you know, a knife at this. So it would have been easier for them to just assassinate him with a gun instead of going through the trouble of wanting to stab him with a knife. So there are two scenarios there. Either he wants, you know, that was set up to get people and get more to him, or uh, to just um, the anger of the people, you know, being uh, wanting to manifest in, in, in the form of uh, his assassination. So that's it. Right now, there is a lot of tension. And um, we have uh, some of our colleagues from here. Usually, we don't get good reports anytime you know, they come back from, from Mali. They tell us, look, people are not happy, people are hungry, um, there are no jobs, uh, uh, you know, no infrastructure, things are just there, and they're just waiting for time to pass so that they can have you know, a new government. So right now, there's so much pressure on Greta, not just on the fact that he's an internal leader, but the fact that he also needs to deliver before you know, February next year. Okay, so beyond those theories regarding the motives behind the attack, what, you know, can you authoritatively tell us that we don't know yet about what happened in Mali yesterday? Well, I think, I think all the information are, are basically everywhere, and I'm sure you also have information. Um, this incident happened in the morning uh, at the Great Mosque in Bamako. And uh, this was when the chief imam was leading the procession you know, for where the uh, the slitting of, of the of the sheep, or you know, as the normal um, tradition in the Muslim festivity, and so in the process of that, um, I'm sure his bodyguards, you know, were were cut off off loose because we also understand that um, some persons were injured, you know, in in that process. So we weren't really sure who was injured if it were the bodyguards or the attackers, or even, you know, people, uh, all the worshippers that went to the mosque with them. So I think every other information uh, you would know, it, it, it's in the in the open there. Uh, we hear his sabre sound, and um, he was able to speak to the national television, and that, um, you know, some attempt uh, to take his life failed, and that he will continue to do what he has been you know, put in there to do and what he has promised the people of Mali that he will do, and especially to deliver, you know, uh, come February 2022. So the, the stake is really high for Asima Goita. We're all waiting. The international community is waiting. Uh, ECOWAS is waiting. People want to see what will happen. If truly, um, of, of course, we also understand that there, there are also plans that uh, Goita might eventually also contest you know, for the February 2022 election. So we are really waiting and, and uh, you know, interesting scenarios are playing out, you know, as time unfolds. How dangerous uh, would it have been for the 
uh, stability of the country if this assassination attempt was mm. successful? I think this would have thrown Mali into another uh, turmoil, another chaos as it is, and probably there have been uh, more struggle for power by the opposition, the M5 movement, and every other people that had wanted to be in that position. So we're just waiting to see what will happen, uh, and, and we're happy that, yes, that didn't happen, because if it had happened, uh, we would have gone back to, you know, uh, from the start, with ECOWAS coming in, to sure that another person comes in, and, and all of that. So but we're glad that didn't happen, and I think we've We'll be discussing another thing now if that had eventually happened. Indeed. Now, um, state um, sources confirm that the two men who were involved have been arrested. What can we expect from the judiciary in Mali regarding prosecution of those men who had attempted to take the life of the interim president? Well, one thing that came to our mind was definitely those guys were going to be in danger for a long time. And the fact that it was um, an assassination attempt on the president of the country uh, that comes with a heavy, um, with a heavy, a heavy fight or heavy charge, as I say. So, of course, they'll be tried. Uh, don't forget, they're still running partial democracy. Let me put it that way. And so, there may be either in the martial trial or the regular court trial. But we haven't heard anything about those two yet, and what will happen to them. Um, can you can you share with us? You know what exactly Asimi Goita is trying to achieve for Mali. Um, not very many people who, of course, um, uh, commit coups can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's possible that he might also contest in February 2022. And so, mm -hmm. w what would you say he is hoping to achieve for Mali? And you know, where is it? You know, where is the the bit of impatience with the people uh, coming in? You know. Um from when Keita was uh, overthrown, a lot of things happened. Um, businesses closed, uh, people, a lot of un unemployment, the, the rate of unemployment skyrocketed. Uh, we saw so many things, you know, going under the waters in Mali. And um, for Goita, the fact that he played a background role, I mean, when we had um, I'm trying to remember, so when we had the other president, he played a background role. And then by the time he came in and realized that he wasn't consulted before the reshuffling of the cabinet, he saw into action. And, those, and that was what we saw, you know, playing out in the second coup. So for, for us to say that Goita may likely, you know, drop the military uniform and all that and go civilian, he will do that in February. And that's very common in Africa. You can't take that away. Wherever has got into power we always want to be there and and that is what will happen in february so for greater of course like every other leader would want for his country to create that you know to bring back mali the way it used to be uh, but i think um he has a very daunting task uh, ahead of him and uh, we also fear that the election may, may not may not may not really be that peaceful as it is because Right now, there are lots of um, divisions. There are oppositions who want to be, you know, the position where he is at the moment. And there are people who don't really like him because he's coming from the military background. But we're also hoping to see that, you know, um, the, the influence from the, uh, the Sheikh himself, if that would to, you know, allow the process to be free and fair. Uh, right now, there's so much playing out, and we're just waiting to see what will happen uh, next year. But for uh, Goita, uh, definitely he'll be back, you know, as a civilian president. Is there any similarities you can draw between the chaos, or the political chaos in Mali now, and what happened in Haiti not long ago with the assassination of uh, their president? Um, these uh, <laughs> two countries, you know, have some similarities, you know, with, uh, I believe, being French colonies from the past. So yes. is, there, is there any similarities you can draw um, maybe also bringing in the involvement of the French government? Yeah, there, are, there are quite a lot of similarities. First of all, uh, they are former French colonies. Uh, secondly, the, the, the French are, um, are not letting go as it is. Uh, that's why you can see um, more than 5,000 French troops in, in Mali. I mean, doing what? Uh, you know, and again, uh, Mali is a rich country. Mali is, is so rich in minerals that even the French know, and that's why they find it very difficult to leave Mali. If they leave Mali now, um, of course from the north you see the, um, 
the rebels coming in to, to take charge. And so there's a whole lot in Mali that can transform the country. And that's why the French are not letting go. But in the case of Haiti, of course, um, French, the French, they left Haiti impoverished. Uh, it, it, it's, it's taken the Haitians uh, longer than it should to, you know, become a normal country. Uh, we're seeing a country where the rate of unemployment is very high. There's, there's, there's poverty everywhere. Um, it doesn't even look like a French, a French colony, the former French colony. Uh, let me put it that way. So there are quite lots of similarities. But in terms of Mali, Mali is richer than Haiti. I mean, in terms of minerals, in terms of manpower, in terms of even you know um, uh, land land mass and, and, and all of that. Uh, but where the French are having uh, a more say is the fact that they are coming in with their troops to help you know uh, fight out the, the uh, insurgency and, and all of that. So the French over there, they, they, they can't go in a hurry, whether Macron is saying that they will withdraw some troops next year, and they will always be there. And, and that's why um, everything that is being done, especially in Francophone uh, West African countries, we're seeing the influence of French in it. It's even better for ang Anglophone, but in terms of uh, Central and, and West African Francophone, Everything is, is French. You can't take that away. Now, still staying on this topic about French involvement in Mali, um, from what angle do you think this is? Is this from a you know an angle of their own self-interest, talking about all the resources they could benefit from Mali, or would you say they simply want to offer assistance? We know that Mali has been struggling <clears throat> with the jihadist insurgency in the country for many years. So, would you say that's why the operation back in that was suspended has been resumed and they're not pulling troops out of the co country anymore? I, I, for me, I think assistance is just um, assistance is just a cover up. Let me put it that way. Uh, we, we know what the French, um, we know what they are, uh, you know, and um, the fact that the country is rich in minerals that's enough to attract any former uh, colonial mas master like like uh, you know the French. Another example is the fact that um, the French, the French, like like you all know. Francophone countries have a huge amount of their reserve in the French banks, and that's why you see the, the French shepherds, you know, being used across uh, nine Francophone countries. And then for the fact that they are also refusing uh, to align with the ECHO, which is supposed to be a uniform currency, you know, among Francophone and Anglophone uh, West Africa, that, that, is, that is becoming an issue. So, uh, Saying that they are there for assistance, yes, yes, they are there for assistance, but for us, it's just a cover up. We know who the French interests, what they are, they want to control businesses in, in West Africa, they want to, you know, get deeper into the resources. An example is even here in Senegal, where you have 90% of the businesses, French businesses, and part of what uh, brought up the, the earlier process you, you all heard of a couple of months back. You know, between the incumbent and, uh, and the opposition leader, Sokka himself. So that is what is also playing out in Mali. The French cannot leave Mali in its entirety. It will take a miracle for the French to withdraw all its troops. You know, it will take a miracle. Even when you see that the, the, French, the, um, the, the Malian forces are strong enough to battle the insurgency on its own, the French will always want to be there. Is because there? of that influence that they've had over the uh, Mali and other Francophone countries over the years, it oh. is very difficult to, uh, to see French, you know, uh, taking their hands off uh, Francophone West Africa. All right, final question, still on the same angle. I is it risky to play into those uh, conspiracy theorists who suggest that the French may have a hand in some of the, the chaos? You know, yes, you've mentioned, you know, that the idea mm -hmm. of support is really just a cover up. Um, yeah. But, you know, o over time, we've seen for a long, long time, even as far back as Thomas Sankara's era, mm. you know, how these foreign countries always have a hand in some assassinations or some, you know, overthrowing of certain governments, you know, to put in people that would play to their, you know, their, or dance to their team. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so is, is it risky to maybe suggest that some of these theories might be right? Uh, no. No, I, I think I think the French don't want to be involved in in um, uh, in, uh, in in king king making the king making process. I think uh, theirs will just to be at the background and, and ensure that you know the right thing is done. 
uh, I, I wouldn't say there is uh, such an influence uh, on, in that regard. Okay, okay, finally from me, um, Mr. Edit, what would you say is the state of security in Mali like at the moment, especially you know, with this recent attempt on the life of uh, Colonel Asimi Goita? Well, the capital barracks have been beefed up, they've been reinforced triple times, uh, like we heard, and um, the military is patrolling in the streets and ensuring that, uh, you know, in this festive um, uh, summer season, you know, uh, there won't be any surprise attack from, from any of, you know, the, uh, the, the rebels or the insurgents as, as it is. So, security is really beefed up, um, you know, in the border area, the, the Kati barracks where the you know the president is, and um, we're just waiting to hear you know more details, just like uh, you know you've you've asked. But for now, everything everything remains calm, and security is on high alert in Mali. Thank you very much, Imo Edet, journalist based in Senegal. We appreciate your time and analysis Thank you for having on me. the issues in Mali. Yes. Thank you for having me. Have, have a great day. With us. All right. You too. Yeah. And this is where we say goodbye this morning. Um, thanks for being with us all through this Wednesday morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations, as always, you know where to find us. It's at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. And we have a second YouTube channel. Yes, is... it's at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Annetta Felix. Thank you for joining us today. And I am Osao Gie Ogbawa. I'll see you at nine.